years, there have been several scenarios put forward as to how the design of the Ural motorcycle first came about. BMW R71 motorcycles were covertly purchased in Sweden and smuggled into Russia. Soviet engineers then dismantled the BMWs and reverse engineered them, copying every detail of the BMW design, making moulds and dies to produce their own engines, gearboxes and frames in Moscow. The Russians simply stole the designs. As a result of the non-aggression pact between Germany and Russia, a Russian engineer was given access to the R71 drawings and designs. And due to technology sharing between the two countries, several castings and moulds of the R71 motorcycles were then shipped back to Russia for analysis. Since the German R71 was soon to be superseded by the newer BMW R75, this scenario seems to be the most plausible explanation. But as it was wartime, any of these scenarios is quite possible. But there is very little evidence to support any of the claims due to the devastation of war. Many records were just lost forever. Early in 1941, the first Russian-made M72 motorcycles were shown to Joseph Stalin, who immediately approved production of the motorcycles. The factory in Moscow produced 1,753 motorcycles prior to the relocation of the factory in 1941, after Germany invaded Russia. The Soviets were worried that the Moscow factory was within range of the German bombers, so it was decided to move the motorcycle plant further east out of the bombers range and into the Ural mountain region. The chosen site was the town of Erbit. In late 1942, the first M72s were sent into battle. Like the Germans, the Russians made very good use of motorcycles in their mechanised cores. Over the course of World War II, almost 10,000 M72 motorcycles were delivered to the front line most of them armed with either machine guns or mortars. After helping to defeat the Nazi armies of Adolf Hitler, the IMZ factory, or Erbit Motorcycle Factory, was renovated, and they began building Urals for civilian use. In 1946, a separate manufacturer, KMZ, or the Kiev Motorcycle Factory, also became operational. This factory was in Ukraine, and it manufactured Dnieper motorcycles, specifically for the Red Army. And by the end of the 1950s, the IMZ plant in Erbit was turned over to full non-military production. While both the IMZ and KMZ factories were once both part of the USSR, Dnieper's are Ukrainian motorcycles, not Russian, and their engineering is different. The first Urals exported were to developing countries in 1953, but by the end of the 1960s, Urals were also being exported to many other countries. The name Ural was first used in 1962 on an entirely new model, the M62, and this one still runs after 60 years of use. The name itself comes from the vast Russian mountain region which separates Europe from Asia, the Ural Mountains. It is one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world.
From the early 1970s, both Ural and Nipa motorcycles were imported into some countries and were sold using the name Cossack or Neville motorcycles. But if you see this word on the tank of a bike, it is simply how the word Ural is spelt in the Russian language. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, Ural was no longer a state-owned company. New ownership brought new ideas, new production techniques and updated technology. And while the outward appearance remained the same, including the inherently beautiful, horizontally opposed flat twin engine, everything good and unique about the old Urals has been maintained, and Ural has become one of the world's most successful sidecar outfit manufacturers ever, and they are highly sought after possessions. Sometimes, you're going to hear about poor quality or reliability issues. It's also the most unreliable motorcycle you can buy a brand new to this day. Oh my God. So, after he flooded the Ural's engine with water, the engine still... <laughs> Ural's are built for a purpose. They are built like a tank, from steel and not plastic. But will we need to work on one? Absolutely. They do require regular maintenance. But if you're mechanically minded, you can do all of the maintenance yourself, in your own garage. They have a timeless, old-school style, and while they are not fast and somewhat agricultural to ride, they are not for everybody. heavy-duty and rugged motorcycle designed specifically for sidecars. And the two-wheel drive models in particular are built to be used in the worst possible environments imaginable. Places where all other motorcycles would fail. <laughs> The large solid frame allows for a massive payload of around 270 kilos or 600 pounds. They also feature a proper mechanical reverse gear and all three wheel assemblies are now the same, which means if you get a puncher, the spare wheel can now be used in any position on the outfit it is needed. Because the design is very simple, with no complicated electronic gizmos, and they are very easy to work on, a Ural would make an excellent choice for a round the world bike. In 2022, because of the war in Ukraine and the sanctions against Russia, the company moved assembly of Ural motorcycle to Kazakhstan. Some castings, the steel frame and all the sheet metal, will still be handmade and painted in Russia, just like it has been for the past 80 years. The mufflers and leading link forks are also Russian made. Once upon a time, the complete bikes were manufactured on site. But these days, like most manufacturers, many parts are sourced elsewhere, mainly Italy, Taiwan and Germany. But all of the parts will now be shipped to the new location in Kazakhstan for final assembly. Constantly improving, but thankfully still keeping that old back-to-basic spirit, which I guess is why I like them, the Russians have created an excellent utilitarian motorcycle and sidecar combination which has lasted for 80 years. Oh. <laughs>